I want to tell you how to reverse a cavity at home by yourself very easily if you know what to do. So if you have a dentist telling you they've never seen it happen, well, they've never used my system and my strategies. And if you've heard people say, no, no, you can't reverse decay into dentin, that is inaccurate. I have seen it. I've seen it in multiple teeth. It will occur. Prove it for yourself. Today, we'll learn from Dr. Ellie Phillips, a leading expert in dental health. She'll be tackling one of the most common dental concerns, cavities. Can you really reverse a cavity at home? And does the old trick of oil pulling really work? Dr. Phillips will guide us through the science behind cavity reversal, share natural tips for promoting tooth healing, and debunk myths around oil pulling. If you're curious about maintaining strong, healthy teeth without invasive treatments, this video is a must-watch. Stay tuned for expert advice on protecting your smile. Here's Dr. Phillips to tell us more. Before we can begin talking about what to do, let's talk about what actually makes a cavity happen. What makes cavities form in your mouth? Because they don't suddenly occur. They're not like a blister on your foot. Most people have no idea why cavities form. They think if they have a filling, that's the end of the story, and it absolutely is not. You see, a cavity begins only can begin in a tooth that's lost its strength. It's lost enamel minerals. Tooth enamel is kind of like a skeleton, a structure, like a honeycomb packed with minerals in between all of the spaces. And the problems begin when you lose those minerals from those spaces, and you lose them because they get dissolved out of your tooth enamel by any kind of acidity. It can be acidity from foods, from eating, from snacking, from all kinds of things, including the acids produced by bacteria. And that's where all of this is going to come together. So the first stage of a cavity begins with what we call in dentistry demineralization, the removal of minerals from the outside of your teeth. And when this occurs, it opens up holes, little spaces. And the problem with that is because plaque actually enters those spaces. Now, what is plaque? You may have heard of plaque and thought it's a thing, but it isn't. It begins with a certain group of bacteria, really bad kind of guys in the bacterial world. And the most famous of these bad bacteria is Streptococcus mutans. And you may have heard about Strep mutans. It's famous because it processes sugar in your mouth. Now that's sugar from sugars of all kinds, whether it's natural sugars or sugar from uh, sources that cakes and pastries and things that you eat that are made with sugar. It can even be from sugars in fruits. Any kind of sugar will feed, even a tiny amount will feed strep mutans. And when strep mutans get some sugar, it has energy. Now in Floating in your saliva, strep mutans cannot reproduce. But the problem with strep mutans is when it has energy, it makes little strands of sticky tendrils. And that allows strep mutans to stick to your tooth. Once strep mutans has attached to your tooth, then it can get its friends together and it clump into this mass, uh, which we will talk about how the plaque forms in another video, but basically it, it gets thicker and it gets more and this mass of plaque is multiplying and as it multiplies, the byproduct is acidity, acids. So guess where these acids go? Into your tooth to cause more demineralization. The bacteria go into that open hole, do the same thing again, cause more demineralization, go further in, and so it goes. This progressive destructive process goes on and on. And the mass of these bad bacteria, these strep mutans mixed up with the acidity and the decayed part of your tooth, this part of your tooth that's just being dissolved and caving in little by little. To start with, it's just a few of the skeleton structures. And this mass of brownish kind of material is what a dentist will call caries, C-A-R-I-E-S. So caries is actually a, a kind of material made up of the bacteria that caused it to occur and the damage of the tooth. So it is, in fact, a kind of infection. 
Now, if this infection continues unstopped or unchecked, eventually it will undermine the strength of your tooth and eventually that tooth will cave in. It hasn't got structure to support it anymore and that caving in creates what we call a cavity. So a cavity isn't the infection, it isn't caries, it's actually the symptom, it's the last stage of this infection. And I think that's really important to differentiate because when we talk about how do you stop a cavity, the best time to stop, of course, is right at the beginning, long before it caves in. Now I'm going to say here, if you already can see a hole in your tooth, it doesn't mean don't listen. Because even if you've got a hole in your tooth, and even if what I tell you next isn't going to make that hole disappear, which it probably won't, especially if it's a giant hole, but what it will do, everything I tell you, will strengthen the surrounding enamel, which will make any kind of filling or crown or any treatment easier for your dentist. It will clean up and stop this process so it won't go any deeper, it won't keep channeling closer and closer to the nerve inside your tooth, so you will end the disease process and you will harden up the actual caries, this soft mushy stuff, once the infection's gone and when you use the, the, the techniques that I recommend, that will harden up and be much easier for the dentist to remove cleanly, completely, and so that it doesn't necessarily cause as much damage to the tooth or even to the nerve inside the tooth. So it's well worthwhile trying to control a cavity even if you think you will eventually need a filling, and many people do. But on the other hand, many people don't. And the myth that's out there currently is that once a, ca a caries is into the dentin, you can't stop it. And I will say to you right now, if you follow my instructions, my recommendations, this goes far deeper than the normal recommendations. And you can and probably will be able to stop caries into the dentin, providing it hasn't caused a giant cavity to already have formed. And I hope now that's clearer, the difference between the infection, the caries, and the cavity. So, how do you stop that infection? The first thing we have to do is actually limit sugar. This will limit plaque from forming in the first place. But that will stop the future problems. The second thing we have to do is actually stop this infection that's already started in your tooth. And the way we do this is to actually help the outside surface of the enamel heal itself. And in order to do this, we have to stop that acidic damage and we have to increase the amount of minerals that are available for the enamel to repair itself. Now, enamel isn't alive. Enamel is a crystalline form. And crystals, as you know, if you've done an experiment at school, you may have grown crystals in a Petri dish in the lab in your science classes. And what occurs is that once there's a crystal, it can add to itself, providing the liquid around it is at the correct acidity or pH, and that the solution around it is absolutely packed with minerals. Now, this is where your saliva, the liquid in your mouth, is the miracle worker. Because saliva is dripping, it's super saturated with the very minerals that your teeth need to repair the outside enamel. So, all you really have to do, you don't need expensive toothpastes and remineralizing solutions or very strong fluoride. All you need to do is give your mouth adequate time to interact with the saliva in your mouth. Now, the problem comes for people who have a saliva flow that is the wrong pH. And what do people do who have a dry mouth? Maybe you have had your salivary glands removed or they didn't form properly, or you have a disease that took out your saliva, or you're taking medications that dry it up. This is where xylitol is your ally. You see, xylitol, whatever your problems are, will stimulate a flow of mineral-dense 
saliva, the spit in your mouth, and it will come into your mouth at the right pH and full of these minerals to repair this outside casing or coating on the surface of your teeth. You can speed this process of mineralization for sure. And the way you do that is using the right kind of fluoridated toothpaste and mouth rinses. And I am very, very specific about the only kind of fluoride I recommend, which is sodium fluoride. And the rinses that I recommend are a 0.05, very, very dilute, very, very insignificant. And you may hear dentists wanting to prescribe for you some kind of really strong fluoride. I highly recommend trying the more dilute first because it appears to be far more effective when you use it two or three times a day. Don't use it more but twice a day should work really well. If you think you have a very dry mouth or you want to use it three times a day, that's okay. Um, but what happens, what the fluoride is actually doing is it's speeding this remineralization process. And this is terrific news because we know from children's teeth that enamel in children's teeth, when they erupt a new permanent molar, and all of this is rela related only to adult teeth. Children's teeth, we will talk about in another video, but if you want to make a cavity in a, an adult tooth, go away. S actually mineralizing this outside casing is the first thing that you have to do. And we know in a child's tooth, as it comes into the mouth, it has no minerals and it takes a year 12 months for that mineralization, it's called maturation, to occur. This is why a child's tooth coming in the mouth always looks yellow, always looks darker. It's really soft, they decay really easily. When we mineralize them with these same techniques of not eating and drinking in between meals, giving your saliva time to mineralize, we can speed a year, which is what it normally takes, to three months simply by rinsing twice a day with a dilute 0.05 sodium fluoride mouth rinse. So if you're trying to make this outside casing of your tooth harden right itself right up, I absolutely recommend using mouth rinses that I recommend because you'll shorten the time interval. If you're going back to the dentist, I would allow yourself about three to four months to have mineralized superficial decay. Anything that's just in the enamel should go away in three or four months. And if it's deeper into the dentin, that's what we're going to talk about next. Now, if you have decay that goes into the dentin, it means there are bacteria deeper inside your tooth. And most dentists will say fluoride doesn't work. What they've seen is what I've seen two years ago when we only used fluoride, that the, the fluoride and this mineralization would happen everywhere except a tiny little hole in the surface. And that little tiny hole was basically a feeding straw for the bacteria inside the tooth. They were sucking in the sugars and the liquids from your mouth so they could continue to thrive and grow and damage your tooth inside. So we have to get that little hole, that feeding straw, to close up. That's when we get rid of these inside deeper bacteria. And we can only do that, it's actually the reverse way around. We have to get rid of the bacteria so that the hole can close completely, the surface of the enamel is completely healed, and then the internal mineralization can occur. So if you have a dentist telling you they've never seen it happen, well, they've never used my system and my strategies. And if you've heard people say, no, no, you can't reverse decay into dentin, that is inaccurate. I have seen it. I've seen it in multiple teeth. It will occur. Prove it for yourself. And you can do this quite easily by using the products that I recommend as part of my complete mouth care system. You see these other mouth rinses that we put together with the xylitol, with the dilute fluoride, these other mouth rinses target other bacteria, ones that are deeper inside the tooth, and they will then stop this little hole in the surface of the enamel. And when that enamel is complete and a complete barrier, there'll be no food for the internal bacteria, they will die. And then the internal workings of the tooth will take over. 
And again, I am critiqued because people say, well, Denton is an inert, it's, it's not alive. But it is, in a way. It's so clever. The internal cell that actually supplies an arm that goes down the tubules that are inside Denton. This is an odontoblast, which has its body right in the center of your tooth, but its arm, its kind of long, thin arm, floats in liquids inside this a channel or tubule as it's called that runs through the main part of the tooth and this tubule holds the little arm of the odontoblast cell in a lymphatic or liquid in that tubule. Now there are two ways minerals can come to mineralize this now empty void that was caused by the caries or this infection process and the minerals either come from the liquids, these lymphatic liquids, which are in connection with your body liquids. And this is where diet, nutrition, circulation, maybe taking a supplement, all these things can help, help your body heal this internal place. And then the other thing that occurs is that the odontoblast cell has the capability of secreting new dentin to actually block the end of the tubule to put up a barrier to stop these disease, plaque, carious bacteria from attacking the center of the tooth. It's a natural defense system. The reason it doesn't work very well most of the time is that the kind of assault of our modern diets is so rapid and so aggressive the poor little odontoblast doesn't stand a chance. But when we give it time, when we cut off the disease food, then we give the odontoblast time to do its repair and its remineralization of the interior of the tooth. And this process can take up to one or two years to occur. So what do you do? You go back to the dentist, see what they say. If they think that your mouth health has dramatically improved, maybe you could ask to try longer before they fill what they might see on an x-ray as a cavity. You can ask your dentist if they frown at you, you could ask for how much time would they give you. The longer you can extend the time, the more they should be able to see on x-ray. First of all, the enamel healing within three or four months. And maybe if you go back for an annual visit, which would be 13, 14 months later, maybe a little longer, they should be able to see on x-ray minerals occurring, a remineralization of this area. And it's really between you and your dentist how long you wait. I always gave my patients the first three months before we ever fill the cavity, unless it was an emergency, so that we could see what could heal itself. Then the question is, what is safe? What is good for you? Where are you traveling? What, what's happening? Is this tooth a, pro a problem? Is it a food trap? And so that you will need to discuss these things with your dentist, but at home, by yourself, if you want to do these things, you can make an incredible change to a cavity and potentially completely reverse it within a year. And that would save your tooth. And, and then the question is, why is that important? Because nothing beats a pristine tooth for strength, for beauty, for lasting, for causing you no more problems. And you will have learned how to mineralize your teeth, not just that tooth, your entire mouth. So I think there are so many arguments for why it's worth giving time, try to reverse this cavity at home, and please share your results with your family and friends because so few people in the dental world believe that you can reverse a cavity that is interdented. Have you heard about oil pulling? It sounds like such a natural way to care for your teeth. But I have to let you know that oil pulling is a powerful therapy and its effects on mouth health are very similar to the effects we see with the use of an antibiotic. Now, oil pulling was an Ayurvedic method of cleaning the mouth back 2000 years ago.
You take some sesame oil into your mouth, swish it around for 15 to 20 minutes, and then spit it out. Back in 2008, a naturopathic doctor and the president of the Coconut Research Center wrote a book called Coconut Oil Pulling. And this generated a lot of interest in the naturopathic world and people started to use oil pulling here in the United States. Now, studies have been done since then, mostly comparing oil pulling with the use of an incredibly powerful prescription antiseptic mouth rinse called chlorhexidine. Now, I have to tell you, in my entire dental career, I have never once prescribed chlorhexidine because it wipes out not only the bad bacteria in your mouth, but also the good ones. And we need good bacteria in our mouths if we want our mouths to be healthy and protected. And they're also valuable for our cardiovascular health and our breathing. So extermination of all the bacteria in your mouth is not what you should be looking for. And we did a test on a lady who had been oil pulling for six months and found exactly that. She had no bacteria in her saliva. So although her mouth was clean, her mouth was not necessarily healthy. Now I've written about mouth bacteria in my book, Mouth Care Comes Clean, and explained how you can nurture the good bacteria in your mouth, not only with diet, but also with xylitol and with your daily habits. And in this way, you'll not only get rid of disease and damage, but you will also promote the good bacteria that will protect your teeth and lead you to improved oral health. Next, watch the Dr. Ellie Phillips Club playlist for more information on more dental health. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.